it's almost time. This is a video I don't normally post on the channel, but you know what? It's a special occasion. Something like this in the US is not happening until 2044, I believe. So in like a decade from now. I'm currently right in the center of the state of Indiana, a little uh, northeast of the city of Bloomington. So we are directly in the path. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> only like two minutes away from 49 after and that's when the conjunction is supposed to start so any minute now we should see a little blip go into the sun in front of the sun okay so it's like 52 after and we're starting to see a little blip poking through you could see from the camera the telescope that it's on like the upper right hand corner of the sun <laughs> But if you look at it with your bare eyes, it would appear. Be sure to put on glasses because it's extremely dangerous without protection. You would see it on like kind of, it depends where you're standing, but like near the bottom of the sun. But really the moon would be passing right through it. Oh my gosh, there's a crack of the sun! It's like a stick! All right, now it's starting to look like someone took a bite out of the sun. It's like exactly 2 p.m. right now, Eastern. And it's now completely visible through any glasses you're wearing, through your naked eye. And the full thing I should mention, it's at like 307, 309, um, sometime around then. It should last around four minutes, the total blackout. And pretty much like all the planets in the range of like near the sun from the perspective view should be visible. So like Mercury, Venus, Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, the gas giant, the ice giants. Yeah, pretty much every other object should be visible considering Earth is like currently on like one side of the system. Everything else is like on the other. So this is a truly spectacular phenomenon. <laughs> oh yeah, it's really looking visible now. The time is about 2.07. Just another hour, but I think the time will fly pretty fast. Okay, currently it's like 2.16. And like one third of the moon at least is currently over the sun. So I wouldn't say it seems that much darker, maybe. I mean, I'm not feeling as much heat as I did like 20 minutes ago. It is exactly halfway through and the time is about 2.33. I'm just gonna do a little time lapse until like 3.05, that's when totality starts. Okay, it's almost 2.40 and it's to that point where it actually feels darker. Like it's starting to feel like a cloudy day. The wind I think picked up a little bit, but like a little over half the moon is covering the sun at this point, so it feels cooler. It's 40 after. You can't really experience it unless you're in person here, but it's definitely darker now. Like it almost feels like a sunset coming up. Some of the shadows are changing and just I can like kind of stare at the sun. I'm not gonna test that out though. We better enjoy this while it lasts because we're not getting anything like this until 2044 unless we go to like Europe or something. <laughs> As I was saying, the one in, in 2044 is just passing from like Northern Canada, Canada to like Colorado or something, so. Okay, there, we got a fingernail. It's 2.50, we got like 15 more minutes. I'm just gonna film the last 15 minutes here. I think animals are starting to go wild. <gasps> yeah. The bobcats are coming out. Owls. Uh. 
Oh god, the shadows. You want glasses? No, you can't look. You have to wear the glasses. I've never experienced something like this before. So dark. Ten minutes. I'll let you people know when to film because it's in like ten minutes. Okay. It's weird because it feels like it's cloudy, but it's not. <laughs> I swear to God, if if my storage run out, run, runs out, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I got a handkerchief you can wipe the tears with. <laughs> sure you do. Just so you know. Crescent time. Let's see if it works. Oh yeah. A group picture like during the blackout? That'd be awesome. Should we do that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we got flashes on everything. I'm gonna, I, I want to document this whole thing. I think we should do it after the blackout because I just want to enjoy it. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so you three with the glasses there get to smile. Okay, it's nearly three o'clock. And it's just a little sliver. Don't worry. They go in the phone, they don't come out. Oh. <laughs> the shadows, though, are still strong. Oh, it's so dark. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, it is Elijah, so take dark. A look now. Elijah. Use your glasses. Hey, why isn't it light? It just goes from daytime to nighttime, like, so fast. Like,. It's covered by a little haze, but like, eh, no harm done. <laughs> Honestly, the weather kept saying cloudy, so I was actually worried. Like, at least we would get the blackout, right? But like... It's just... It's three... It's, it's gonna be 3.02 in a, in a second here. I'd start filming anytime. Yep. You can see. Now your turn. Four minutes. Okay. Yeah. Minutes. Yep. Um, you know it'll start. It'll happen? start in about two minutes. Two minutes. It'll be uh, three oh five. Oh, here we go. Here we go. It's almost disappeared. Here we go. Oh, it's so close. It's like about to happen. Oh, we got 45 seconds. 30 seconds. Yeah. Oh, it's so small. That's kind of an eerie. Here we go. 15, 14, 13, 12. 11, 10, 9, it's so dark, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, oh, I think, I think that's, uh, oh, oh, Venus, Venus, there's still just a tiny little sliver, oh my god, oh my god, wow, it's a halo, it's only it's a halo. 5 p.m., 5 p.m. I can see nothing oh, in the sky. Wow. Oh! You can just look. There's supposed to be a, um, a comet you can Take a picture. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, picture. Yeah. Shut up. Up there. Oh my God, that's incredible. Yeah, the ones, that, the stars that you can see are planets. Okay. Yeah. Venus is the one near the trees. Jupiter, Jupiter is that slightly dimmer one. And then that that slightly dimmer one is Jupiter. It's so dark. This is like 
the most amazing thing. I. It feels like it's like like eight p.m., but it's like three or six. The animals. Mars. Oh, is that a comet? No, that's a plane. That's a plane, right? Yeah, it's a plane. Mars would be somewhere over there around Venus. Um, this, we, we got a bit of clouds now. Um, all the birds are going nuts. I'm gonna turn it off. No, there's nothing in there. It's so dark. Oh my god. Like the sky is like so well, it's good because that way and that way. And it's, it's so cold. So if you look there, that's still sun hitting. And over there, that's still sun hitting. Outside of the shadow area. Are you able to get photos of the eclipse with that camera? Okay, I feel like I feel like the halo is almost over. That's so cool. It's like a whole halo. I think I think this is one of the most wildest experiences. Ah, here we go. It's back. Now it feels like almost like a stadium type of brightness. <laughs> a little bit. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, I want to do it tomorrow. I'm hungry. <laughs> So, anyone else's first experiencing a totality? Yep, totally. Okay, closing first time. timer. You can all. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> Back to the telescope. So that about wraps it up. Uh, my other family members already got bored after the totality ended, so they all went inside, but like. Um, I mentioned earlier that this was my first time witnessing a totality, like, yeah, I've seen many partials in my life, but, like, this is my first time being directly in the path, like, yeah, I could have seen the one, um, that went past, like, Nebraska and Kansas back in 2017, but, like, um, my astronomy passion just wasn't at its peak back then, and, like, I just didn't th think the road trip was worth it, but, like... But as I've gotten older, I can say that this was one of the coolest experiences of my life. Like, I'm not even joking. I can't even describe the experience without dragging you all in to see it for yourself. But it's totally worth going if you get the opportunity or if you, if you can, of course. Like, I mean, yeah, maybe if it involves, like, leaving the mainland and going, like, halfway around the world to see another one, maybe it's too much to take on unless you're, like, very enthusiastic about it. Like, um, at the same time, though, these are very rare events that only happen a few times in your lifetime if, if you're unlucky enough. <laughs> For me, it's probably worth going to, like, Montana or Colorado to see the ones that are happening in, like, 2044 and 45, and I think there's one passing through Japan in the early 2030s, and we go to Japan, like, um, like a few times every other year or so. It's definitely worth going to Spain to try to see one of the three that will pass through later this decade, you know what I'm saying? Besides, the U.S. had its fair share of eclipses. I think it's Europe's turn to shine, or turn to get dark, whatever. <laughs> 
Hell, there isn't even one passing directly through Minnesota. My state until 2099, and I'll be 96 by then, so I can't really promise I'll be alive by then, but we will just have to wait for every opportunity we get for these eclipses to happen. Obviously, it's something we cannot control whatsoever, so we will just wait and see what happens.